Give it up for Alex Barnett, everybody. Alex is here. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for sharing your date night out with me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, just remember, first date really sets the tone for the relationship. Like it did for me and my girlfriend. She looked across the table at me and she said, listen, just so you know, I'm looking for a guy to marry. And I was like, you know what, that's beautiful. I will date you while you keep looking. <laughs> yeah, a little scared of time than not, I don't know. Maybe because my parents' marriage was the basis for the film Alien vs. Predator. <laughs> By the way, my girlfriend is black, and um, even, thanks guys, uh, <laughs> even in today's world though, people do get weird about interracial dating. Like, not you guys here, obviously, you know, you're into interracial dating, white and off-white, but uh, people, buddies of mine, they're like, dude, what's with the black woman? I'm like, I don't know, because black guys don't do it for me. But I, the truth was, I was very intimidated when I first met her family, because her brother's like 6'6", he played college ball, he's black too. And, uh... No, look, like every white person, I'm a little scared of black people. I mean, I was in civil rights class, you know, I heard the films, We Shall Overcome. But we're never sure, overcome racism or overcome white people. Truth is, I, I don't know why she wants to marry me. Like, I thought women want a guy with a steady job, right? Like, I've had eight jobs since college. I've been fired from seven of them. I'm not joking. My business card now is just a, a picture of my mother weeping uncontrollably. And then I thought women want like a big guy, you know, someone to protect them. Who's gonna protect me? Look at me, I'm on a stage, I'm still short. I've never seen a parade live. And, thank you. And it's really irritating because like just once, I want to have sex doggy style and not to say like, excuse me, could you crouch down a little? <laughs> the point is, it's hard to feel like a man in today's world, right? Right, okay. Look, try doing it when you're my height. I was in a club the other night, my girlfriend, some of her friends, surrounded by beautiful women, and I thought, okay. Maybe it's not that big a deal. Next thing I know, one of the women turns around, picks me up, starts swinging me around. She's like, oh, you're so cute. She's so lucky. My feet swinging across the floor like this. First of all, where was this chick when I was trying to see the parade? Second of all, I'm a man. I have a bar mitzvah certificate that says, you are a man. Actually, it says, you are a man. Oh, but, but also, she makes more money than I do. And not a little, like twice as much. Now, remember, I'm a Jewish guy, she's a black woman. This should never happen. We, we, uh, we just moved in together, and within an hour of moving in, there's a knock on the door, it's an old lady from downstairs. She's like, I wanna invite you guys to Bible study. Every day in the lobby at six. So I'm like, listen, we're Jewish. Figuring that like everybody in the world, she's a little bit anti-Semitic and we'll get right out of this, right? She's like, oh no, don't worry, we start at the beginning. I'm like, so do we, but we don't keep going into other people's apartments. Now, first thing that happens when you move in your girlfriend, she says, we have to consolidate our stuff, right? Consolidate, that means throw out my stuff. She started my towels. She's like, your towels are too old. They're not computers, right? They're not coming out with towels 9.0 that plays iTunes and you dry it behind. Like, listen, I know my towels are old, but you wanna know something? If I wanna dry my nether regions with Bert and Ernie, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> then I come home to go to sleep and the blanket is gone. In its place is a shiny, satiny, gold duvet cover, right? Like the most effeminate thing I'd ever seen. I'm looking at the bed, I'm getting menstrual cramps. By the way, in case you don't know, I looked it up, duvet is French for gay man's sleeping bag. 
Then we had to get carpeting. We go up to the store. I'm like trying to hurry her along. I'm like, I like one of those samples. She's like, no, no, too matchy matchy. <laughs> matchy matchy isn't a word. <laughs> so all of a sudden she's an old Chinese lady. Like, oh no, too matchy matchy. <laughs> I said, don't you want it to match? She said, yes, but there should be some contrast. And that's when I realized that my girlfriend, this beautiful black woman, is not with me out of love. It's because her skin's contrast. <laughs> By the way, consolidate doesn't just mean like stuff. It means your lives, like compromise and sharing. I don't want to share. I want all, not half. I'm a Jewish guy. We don't want half of anything. Just ask the Palestinians about the West Bank, <laughs> all right? But it's not just Jewish guys, it's all guys. Guys, it's like, look at Tiger Woods. The dude literally has it all. Has a hot woman, he's like, not enough, I want all the ugly ones too. <laughs> we're actually doing okay. I kid, but we're doing okay. We're, we're talking about having kids, and uh, well, she's talking, I'm pretending to listen. And I'm conflicted because kids are a huge responsibility, right? But I'm also really superstitious. So I'm afraid that if I'm not totally committed at the moment of conception, the kid could come out weird. <laughs> and I don't mean weird, cute weird, like all the comedians thought weird. I mean weird weird. Like it'll be a tarantula or it'll look like Latoya Jackson <laughs> or because I'm Jewish and she's black and have like a big mangled Jew throwing a huge dick but on the wrong part of his body. Like, you know that joke, what's black and white and red all over? I don't want the punchline to be my child. <laughs> so I asked my buddy with kids for advice. He's like, dude, can't. Kids ruin your life. <laughs> but I wouldn't give it up for anything. I was like, huh, ruin your life, wouldn't give it up for anything. You know who else says that? Junkies. So now we're fighting about what to name the child. And my girlfriend says, well, if we have a son, we have to name him Declan. <laughs> thank you. Right, thank you. I'm Jewish, she's black. What the hell does Declan have to do with either one of our cultures? It's like, why not name the kid Yao Ming? <laughs> then my same buddy says, well, just name him after your favorite parent. I was like, dude, I am not having a son named Mommy. <laughs> by, by the way, in the Jewish tradition, we don't name children after living relatives because there's a superstition that when the older person dies and God comes to collect the soul, God could get confused. <laughs> the all-knowing, all-powerful creator of everything <laughs> might not be able to tell the difference between the bundle of joy and a 90-year-old man who won't stop talking about the Great Depression. <laughs> now, I realize they're both bald and toothless, but have you ever smelled an old man? Like, that's not new baby smell. <laughs> Thank you. <gasps> but we do want to pick a name that honors both, you know, our cultures, African-American and Jewish, because we want little Barack Obama wits to be proud of where he comes from. So we've got it down to two. Tell me what you think. LeBron Einstein or Kobe Seinfeld? <laughs> the truth is, when we tell people we're having kids, we get, we, some people are very against it. They're like, oh no, mixing is bad. Mixing is bad. Now, these are the same people who have no problem mixing dogs, right? Like, they'll mix a German chipper with a chihuahua just to see what happens. I'll tell you what happens, you get a Nazi with a quick Latin temper. But they're like, oh no, this is bad. And it's not just white people, it's black people too. They're like, oh no, because you'll get a person who looks black and acts white. <laughs> you know what? People who look black and act white are doing pretty good these days. They're living in the White House. <laughs> Other people are totally into it. They're like, oh, your kids will be beautiful. Biracial children are always gorgeous. Well, look, I hope so. But just because Halle Berry is hot, doesn't mean every time you mix black and white, you get art. You know, sometimes you get an ugly white person who's just dark enough to look dirty, like they need to take a shower. 
Or like, look at me, right? Like, narrow face, thin nose, straight hair. You make me dark? That's not a black dude. That's a Pakistani. I'd be like, congratulations, my is your grandson. His name is Babu. <laughs> Truth is, I am worried about being the white dad of black kids, right? Because what if my biracial son comes to me for advice on being a black man in America? <laughs> what do I know about being president? Or a sex-addicted golfer? Or Oprah's pretend boyfriend? <laughs> no, but like, my last name is Barnett. What if he says... Uh, Dad, the last time a white man named Barnett had anything to do with black people, it was 1962. The governor of Mississippi kept James Meredith out of college because he was black. Is that what you're going to do? You keep me out of college because I'm black? Be like, of course not. Keep me out of college because it's expensive. <laughs> you want to go to college when that financial aid form comes, financial aid form, you know, check that box mark black. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for your time. Have a great night. <laughs>